Okay, welcome to the next part of the seminar, seminar series on low earth satellites. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about uh, BDOT control using magnets workers. So, um, you know, I, we, we've gone over the, uh, the translational dynamics where it's going around the earth. We've talked about the rotational dynamics as it rotates um, using quaternions, which may or may not make, make sense. And then we've also talked about sensor dynamics, so bias, uh, noise, and how to filter that with some complementary filters. And then if you want to get into comp uh, common filters, you can, but um, I'm not going to go over that. Uh, but we've gone over those things. And so now um, this is the last video that I'm going to do in front of the whiteboard, because at this point we're, you have everything that you need to actually program it on a computer and even program some flight software if you read the appropriate data sheets to actually pull the sensor that you were using. Um, so basically, uh, magnet workers are uh, coils of wire. So if you've ever taken like a physics class where you have like a wire coiled around like a, you know, a, a ferret rod or something like that, um, or if you remember the Biot Savart law from your circus class or, or physics two lab or anything like that, if you run current through a coil, it actually induces a magnetic field um, out of plane. And so uh, the the equation for your magnetic moment that you know moment that's out of plane is equal to the number of turns, the area of the coils. So it, do, it doesn't actually matter. Like when you, if you like tightly wind coils, it actually is better to make bigger coils. The problem is, is that you get less turns for a bigger area. And so if you want more turns for a bigger area, you need more wire. And then you're gonna, if you have a lot of wire that's really long, you're gonna run into loss issues because if you run current through a wire, like a, it, it does have finite resistance while you're running through there. But I'm ignoring all that for this uh, this analysis. So anyway, um, the you have the number of turns, the area of the coils, and then the current that you run through it. So more current, more moment. Um, if you look at this cube here, I, I kind of try to draw this in, in this function here, in this thing here, is, well, so here's like my connects uh, diagram, and then this is like my uh, 2D representation of this 3D model. So I'm gonna hold a 3D model, and, um, remember, every single one of these colors represents an axis. So you have like an x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis. And typically what happens is you'll have coils wound uh, on all sides. And so you'll have like a mu x moment from these coils, a mu z moment from these coils, and a mu y component from these uh, coils. And what you can do is you can, if you do n times a, I'm assuming the number of turns in the area of every single space is the same, if I take the current running through the X face, the current running through the Y face, and the current running through the Z face times the appropriate unit vector, that will give me my magnetic moment vector that I can put. This is, this is something that, this is my control input. I can make these currents anything. If I made this, say, one amp and these zero, my magnetic moment would be along the X axis. If I made this one amp and this one amp, well, then my magnetic moment would be here, which would be offset from uh, there. And so I can put that magnetic moment anywhere. Um, you can also run current negative, which would give you a negative moment, or what some people do is they'll put an appropriate um, coil on the other face running the other direction. So if they run a positive current through here, it creates a moment this way. And if they run a positive current on the other side, it makes a moment the other way. It just depends on how you want to design the satellite. Now the torque is kind of interesting. So that's just the magnetic moment, right? That's get that that you put from running current in a in a in a circle. The torque that's actually that actually causes the satellite to rotate to actually move actually is a function of the magnetic field. So if you put a magnetic moment in space, you also need to know where the magnetic field is. And then if you take the magnetic moment crossed with the magnetic field, that will put a torque on the system. And the right hand rule is your friend. So if you take mu, the magnetic moment, crossed with your magnetic field, your thumb will point in the direction of your magnetic torque, okay? Now let's think about what we wanna do. I have here a desired moment. If my satellite is tumbling about this axis in this direction, right? That means my angular velocity vector is this way. Well, what that means, and let me make sure I'm pointed right. I'm rotating about this axis, so my magnetic, my, my, sorry, my angular velocity vector is this direction. I want a moment that is in this direction 
that opposes that rotation so that my satellite slows down. Now you have to, we, we have to think about it. So, so what I have here is I have, I want the magnetic moment to equal negative K times the angular velocity. I want it to oppose motion, okay? Now remember that the, the only thing I have control over is the magnetic moment. I can measure the magnetic field, but the only thing that I can do is affect this here, the magnetic moment. And I want these two to be equal to each other. Now the problem is, is that this may not be possible. And to, to highlight that, I, I drew this, this diagram here. If you put the magnetic field vector like this, and you make a plane, right? This magnetic field vector, because it's an independent variable, it can be anywhere in space, okay? The ideal scenario would be for your magnetic field to be orthogonal to omega and be in plane, because then what you can do is you can put your magnetic moment and in, in plane orthogonal to that, the magnetic field vector, and what you'll get is that your magnetic moment crossed with your magnetic field is down. And that would perfectly oppose the angular velocity. Now the problem is, is if your magnetic field is not in that plane, now if you take that same magnetic moment and cross it with B, your magnetic field, or sorry, your, your, your magnetic torque will be off axis. So if you look there, if I take mu D crossed with B, I'm not pointed perfectly down, I'm pointed off to the side. And so if you look at this, there is even a scenario where if B is perfectly aligned with omega, there is nothing you can do to make that vector go down. And it, watching this video it might be kind of difficult, so it might be a good idea to sort of draw all these figures. But essentially you have your angular velocity vector, your magnetic field vector, and you're trying to figure out where do I put my magnetic moment vector? Let me put this down. Where do I put my magnetic moment vector so that when I, in this, in this case, I want this to be that way. Where do I put my magnetic moment vector such that when I cross it with B, I get something that completely opposes it? And it turns out that this equation here, uh, mu, I call it D, magnetic moment desired is equal to some k times omega cross b. So if you take, look, if you look at this this way, if you take omega crossed with b, the magnetic field, omega crossed with b, you're gonna get a vector that's pointed that way into the board. And then if you take mu cross b, you're gonna get that magnetic moment there. If you take this scenario here, where you have the angular velocity in the magnetic field, if you take omega cross b, that will give you this mu desired, and then if you do mu desired, uh, mu desired cross b, that's gonna give you a vector this way. The, again, the ideal scenario is if your magnetic field is orthogonal to your angular velocity. That way you do omega cross b, you get something in the plane, and then you do mu cross b, and you get something completely um, 180 degrees out of phase with this. Now what happens is, is if you take this mu desired and you plug it back into this magnetic mo magnetic torque, sorry, mu m cross b, you're gonna get k omega cross b, that vector crossed b. And so you'll notice that your torque will be zero if omega and b, the cross product is zero. And what that means is, remember what a cross product is, a cross product is when your two vectors are collinear. So that means if your um, satellite is spinning on this axis and your magnetic field is on this axis, there is nothing you can do with magnet torquers to slow you down. Because you have to have, because of this, this cross product here, any mu that you put in space is not going to oppose motion. Now, it is possible for two things to happen. First, if you have a perfectly cuboid satellite, you will always tumble about this axis. Now, if you have, say, a 2U CubeSat or a CubeSat with, say, a, an antenna or a solar panel, you will have 
cross product of inertia terms, which you will never tumble about a perfect axis, you will always tumble about all axes. In which case you will only be in this scenario for a split second before you're out of that scenario. Another situation is that you're going around the earth, the magnetic field is changing in space as you're going around the earth. And so you have a sort of a plus there that, uh, unless you're in an equatorial orbit, which I don't think I've ever seen, but if you're in a perfectly equatorial orbit around the equator, the magnetic field is almost in the zenith. But if you're say in like an ISS orbit or you know like a Cape Canaveral orbit at 51.6 degree inclination, you're going to be going through you know the pole region, you know over uh, over the northern regions, high latitudes, low latitudes, and so at that point the magnetic field is going to be varying quite a bit, and so you'll never be in. A, I, you, I've run simulations on this. You'll never be in that situation. Um, the other thing is, is that you could always have reaction wheels on board. Now, reaction wheels are expensive, they're complex to use, they, they saturate, you have to desaturate them, they're a very complex animal to deal with. Um, but if you do have a larger satellite and you can use, say, reaction wheels like a control moment gyros, those are always a way to go. Now, this seminar series is on small CubeSat, uh, cube, uh, small cuboid low earth satellites, and typically reaction wheels aren't put on them. Uh, they have been used. I'm not saying that they, they, they just aren't used at all, but uh, most universities are doing this kind of stuff on the cheap, and so magnet torquers are, are typically the way to go. They're easy to build, and they're easy to, to write the controller. Um, so that's all I have for this B-Dot controller. It's a pretty simple design. Um, coming up with the controller is really more looking at geometry, and it just has to deal with, you know, this is what I want, and this is the best that I can do um, to get me there. And in certain situations, it's perfect. In other situations, you get um, sort of a projection into that. And so um, what I'm gonna do on, uh, in the next couple videos, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it all in one video, but it might be a couple, but I'm going to program the equations of motions translational and rotational dynamics. And then I'm also gonna program a, uh, a simple magnetic field model and then uh, use that in conjunction with the sensor dynamic model and the magnetic moment model and the magnetic torque model to detumble a satellite in low Earth orbit. And I'm going to do the whole thing in MATLAB, and so stick around. Hopefully you'll enjoy uh, that part of the seminar series. Uh, that's it for today. Hope you have a good night, and I'll see you in the next video.